have your attention, please? I'd like to call the Opelika City Council work session of June 20th, 2023 to order. Uh, we are uh, first going to ask uh, Scott Parker to make his way to the podium, and he's going to talk to us about the creek line. Yes, sir. I have some guests that are going to present also, uh, Danny Nelson and uh, Mike Akers is going to go also. Okay. Hi, all. Hi, um, my name is Danny Nelson. I'm sure that you're sick of talking to me this week, but <laughs> this time I'm here to talk to you about Creek Line. I am on the board. And for those of you who might not be um, used to Creek Line just off the cuff, uh, we're here to create and encourage access to green spaces throughout Opelika with a focus on waterways where the public's experiences in nature will encourage long-term conservation. Over the past few years, uh, we've had the city support in many, many ways. Not only have we had Scott Parker and Matt Mosley on the board, but also by having access to uh, John Sweatman's ear, we've been able to get the ad easement with, through the OIDA to make the Pepperell Branch come alive. Uh, the grant writing and the acceptance of funds that we're going to uh, be looking for you guys to help us approve being allocated tonight also came from the city's assistance with uh, applying for those funds, which would not have been available to us as just a standard nonprofit. Uh, and also, I would like to give a huge acknowledgement to the engineers from the city who've come out on the trail uh, many times, not only to look at the design as it is now, but also to discuss with us ways that it may need to change due to the way that the sewer easements and stuff work, but also to listen to us talk about conservation points that are important to us for things such as saving trees and uh, natural plants in the area and how we can intermix that with uh, getting better access to the trail, which is what the paving project is all about. I would like to also talk about what we as a board have done uh, over the last few years. Uh, we're not one of the boards that just kind of come and sit around and chat about things a bunch until something springs into life. Uh, we've cleared over a mile of trail with funds that we've previously raised um, to create an eight, eight foot corridor that is completely um, cleared up to 10 feet tall and is being frequently used. Uh, anytime I go out there these days, there are people who are already out there, um, families, dogs, all sorts of people already out there using the corridor as it is. But the people who are missing from that corridor are folks who do not have access without paving being there for them to get there, whether it be strollers, wheelchairs, or any other kind of wheeled access that is necessary for them. Um, we've also brought the SEC, uh, which is the Southeast Conservation Corps, to do specialized trail construction on naturalized areas. We've installed a parking lot with, prior, with also with prior fundraising. And just recently, we raised over $5,000 on Opelika Giving Day for a par pocket park that we're hoping to construct as the paving happens along the trailway. Also, uh, miraculously, after years of going at it, Mike Aikens has also created a new website. So all of this information that we're discussing tonight and pictures that you might see of the trail can all be found on that um, website, which is creekline.org. Creeklineopalaka.org. Um, also, by us not just being a board that sits around, uh, we do have a primary maintenance team, which up to this point has just been Graham Yule and Mike Aikens. So they've really been out there on the trail keeping it alive without, um, even though without other support. Now I'd like to introduce Mike Aikens, who uh, not only does maintenance, but he's also our lead photographer, champion, and also head of our board. Hello, uh, board members. I'm uh, Mike Aikens, and I just wanted to say uh, I've just been had the privilege of serving as the acting coordinator of the project. Uh, and I wanted to uh, just mention here, as we get to talking about the uh, details of the contracting bid award, uh, just to mention that we've also worked on a master plan uh, that is designed to look at all of the uh, waterways across the city of Opelika. Uh, and uh, on the same time frame as uh, the Opelika Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan that was recently uh, finalized in April 2021 to uh, 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 synchronize our thoughts and efforts with the timeline and ideas in that plan. So I just wanted to make you aware that we have an approved master plan and map uh, of how we see uh, situations all along the three waterways that cut across uh, Opelika. 
Seneca, uh, uh, which is Pepperell Branch Creek uh, uh, and Rocky Brook Creek, and those flowing into the Saugahatchee Creek. So we so that master plan, uh, which I won't uh, go into any detail tonight, uh, can be found on that new uh, uh, relaunched website, creeklineopelika.org, and uh, you can see those you can see those details uh, there, and, and let us know. If, certainly, if you have any comments or input or questions uh, that we can help with. And I want to take a moment to just express appreciation to the Envision Opelika Foundation. Uh, they are the fiscal sponsors for this project. Uh, I want to thank uh, John Sweatman, uh, the manager of Opelika's economic development. Without his efforts and, and uh, working with the Opelika Industrial Development Authority on the span of property that the project is on now, that would not be possible. Uh, also, Matt Mosley, Director of Opelika Planning, and Scott Parker's engineering department, of course, has been uh, the engine behind uh, the process to uh, get us to where we are tonight, talking about uh, uh, the award of the actual contract and we'll start the first mile. So uh, with that, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to uh, uh, answer any questions later on afterwards or refer you to the Creekline opelika.org website for information. Thank you. Thank you. So as Mike and Danny has already uh, uh, mentioned, we will, uh, Mr. Stanley will be presenting the bid that we uh, opened last week uh, for the construction of the trail in conjunction with the uh, ADECA grant. The grant is reimbursable to a certain amount then, uh, of that amount. Uh, the trail is going to be a 10-foot wide asphalt path. Um, one thing we talked about doing, I think Brand mentioned, is if we if we kind of make this accommodable to any any ADA accessibility, this will be one of the finest trails in the area, um, nature trail. So what we have added to the project, not only the trail, but we have added access ramps from the parking lot that was constructed by Creekline funds, and the uh, and the uh, Wood Duck Preserve, uh, and where the parkway is going to spread. So this is really exciting. Uh, project that, that I'm proud to be a part of. The engineering department did the design and will also manage the construction of this project as it goes forward. Um, but anyway, we would certainly uh, look for your uh, approval of this uh, bid coming up. And if there's any questions or comments we, we can have, I also want to point out uh, Sharif Summerlin, who is also here, a very vital member of our team also. So proud to be a part of this team and look forward to great things for the group to come. Uh, Scott, how, how long is the trail? Just short of a mile, 4,100 feet. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah, it's exciting. But thank you to all the people that are involved in it. We, we look forward to seeing it up and going. We've been talking about this trail for a long time, so uh, glad to see it coming to fruition. Thank you all for what you're doing. We appreciate it very much. Um, so we got a couple of things to uh, make everybody aware of under general business. Uh, number 11 is an add-on that uh, Russell was passing out. I think you probably saw it on your email earlier today, uh, red clay. And uh, I want to say something about the uh, red clay. I'm going to have a talk uh, with uh, Kerry because they want to do this every week, and I don't think that we are uh, every, month. every month. Excuse me, I don't know that we're willing to close the road uh, in downtown for one business every month. And so I'm going to talk to him about that. But that request is on there for tonight. Uh, the next thing that number 13 under resolutions. A special uh, appropriation to Worthy Squared. I think you all received that. Um, she was is going to be leading um, our um, fire and police departments in some training, and these dollars are to help beat them. Uh, under ordinances, ordinance number one, uh, they've asked us to table it. This and the reason that they, they asked us to table it, the closing on this deal has to happen before July the 15th. 
and so they don't want it rezoned in case the closing doesn't happen for some reason. Uh, and so if y'all would help me with that. And then finally, Ms. Finley, uh, we have some bids. Good afternoon. We're asking the council to approve a contract for ductile iron utility poles. The bid opening date is June 13th. The bid was mailed to 14 vendors. Two bids were received. Recommend the contract be awarded to McWayne Poles on the low bid meeting specification. Questions? We're asking the council to approve a contract for vacuum excavation and utility daylight services. The bid opening date is June the 13th. The bid was mailed to 11 vendors. One bid was received. Recommend the contract be awarded to Smith Industrial Services on their sole bid meeting specifications. Questions? Okay. We're asking the council to approve a contract for the construction of a multi-use trail along the banks of, of Pepperell Branch. The bid opening date is June the 13th. The bid was mailed to 12 vendors. One bid was received. Recommend the contract be awarded to Robertson Paving Company on their sole bid meeting specifications in the amount of $711,242. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a three and a half minute break and we'll start promptly at, at six. So you not gonna be able to go to uh
If I may have your attention, I'd like to call the Opelika City Council meeting of June 20th, 2023 to order. Call roll, please, Mr. Jones. Mr. Allen. Present. Ms. Norris. Mr. Aja. Present. Mr. Rout. Mr. Smith. Here. Uh, we are honored to have uh, Terrence Nolan from the Bridge Church here with us. We're going to ask him to make his way to the podium. Uh, he will lead us in the invocation, followed by uh, City Clerk Russell Jones to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. We all would stand. government officials as they weigh the pros and cons of each constituent's request. Give them wisdom on how to best represent everyone. Father, we also ask that you give our leaders courage so that even when it's hard, they would continue to boldly represent you as you will instruct them of the needs of those most vulnerable. Strengthen them with wisdom and grace for the heavy burdens they carry. May they manage their teams and projects with love. Keep their hearts pure and their eyes turned toward your face as they work in the best interest of the people they are called to serve. We pray that as they hold office, they will never lose the people's trust and confidence. And Father, we pray for their families. Keep them as well as they support these great men and women who have appointed, who you have appointed to serve your people. And it's in the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. gentlemen you all have uh, previously received a copy of the minutes of the june 6 2023 council meeting is there a motion to approve so moved. is there a second second is there any additions deletions or corrections <laughs> having none they'll stand as presented uh, mr miley you're going to represent the mayor this afternoon this evening Well, as he would say, if he was here, your financial report for the month is uh, there. If you have any questions, you can call me or see me. It, it continues to look uh, really good. Uh, revenues continue to come in at the, at the right amount. Uh, so uh, we're, we're pleased about that. I'll give the uh, building report uh, our for the month of May, eight months year to date, we had uh, 49, this is not year-to-date numbers, this is for the, for the month of May, 49 new single-family homes at $10,638,048. Um, we had a grand total of $15,489,75.75 for total permitting in May, which brought our eight-month year-to-date total uh, to 286 new single-family homes at a value of $72,035,561 and our total permit issuing uh, fees for 2023, uh, eight months in, is $132,057,540.96. 102, so um, just folks continue to be very busy. Uh, this is a great sign of uh, the state of our economy. Thank you. Uh, citizens communication, Mr. Jones. Street, Glen Street. I should have something on somewhere that says my name, my address, my social security number, whatever. Anyway, I just, I, you know me and my little concerns, and I have nothing about all the houses coming, but I do have a, how, a problem with traffic. I don't know if when these 
things are planned, if they have every thought of what we're going to do with the traffic coming through. I don't go down 1st Avenue anymore. I sure don't go down 2nd Avenue. I'm not, I've avoided Fox Run Parkway. I mean, we've got to have, we've got to have something. I know this probably doesn't even fall in your job description, but please, somebody plan where all this traffic is going and how it's going to get there. Because you know, I mean, I told you several months, several years ago, we have, let's see, 10th Street, we have 16 entrances from 10th Street Bridge down to Geneva Street. We have, let's see, and we didn't even get those apartments built, no. Anyway, we've got police cars, fire engines. We won't mention, but we should, the big log trucks that go through there. And uh, then school buses, and then just the rest, rest of us people that come through there. It's awful. And it's only two lanes. Two lanes. Same with, with uh, Second Avenue. And you've got, you've got, now we're going to have the sixth grade church, school. We've got the new apartments out there. We've got the, the, uh, uh, it's not more, Jeter. We've got all in apart in apartments, people going to the uh, <sighs> Waffle House, all those eating places and stuff. And we've still got and 18 wheelers coming down there. Please, please help. I know there's some places we can't widen, but please, dear Lord, do something, because I don't want to. I'm still having trouble getting out of my door, my place, and uh, I don't want to, I'm not real fond of taking my life in my own hands. Thanks for your time. Uh, I'm Russ Baggett. I'm the owner of 10,000 Hertz Records, the retail record shop just around the corner on First Avenue. I'm here tonight to express our concern and frustration over the ongoing flooding issues on our block, issues that have increased in both frequency and severity since the new streetscape redesign was completed in early 2021. In the two years that we occupied a space on First Avenue prior to the streetscape project, we experienced one instance of severe flooding in our shop, which was caused by a plastic trash can and a large piece of scrap wood that washed down our street, blocking one of the old gutter inlets in front of Mama Mocha's, the business directly next door to us. Since the streetscape redesign, which took about five months of, streetscape, of uh, street closure, my place here. We've experienced three major flooding incidents inside our shop, the most recent of which was less than a week ago. Sneak and Doddle, the cocktail bar that we are also that we also share a wall with, has gotten water in their space at least twice. Mama Mocha's has flooded upwards of 10 times in that same stretch. And we can provide a timeline of these events, photos, and videos if anyone is interested in seeing. We've been in contact with Mayor Fuller, Scott Parker, and the City Engineer's Office and I believe all members of the city council have been included on most of those emails. I understand the mayor and maybe some members of the council aren't here this evening, but I'm here because this issue is pressing for our business, it's pressing for other business owners on First Avenue, and it should be a pressing matter for city officials as well. The cause of this flooding has been the subject of much debate, and the city engineer has given multiple varying diagnoses for these incidents. Obstructed drains, drain caps that were too small, the holes in the drain caps were too small, degrading the sidewalk and road, cars passing through collected water at the low point on the block, creating waves that then push water into our businesses. None of these appear to have been entirely correct. In each instance, regardless of the diagnosis, city officials have yet to find and address the root cause of the flooding, and so far their prescriptions have not cured the problem. After the second substantial flood in four months this past March, we, meaning myself, Sarah and Taylor Gill from Mama Mocha's, 
and Matt Coyer from Sneak and Dawdle met with Mayor Fuller, Scott Parker, and others from City Engineering and City Planning. We were assured that the city was committed to finding solutions to these ongoing issues, and that they would contract with experts from the private sector to get formal recommendations on how to go about fixing them. Because the underlying causes of the flooding seem to have been misunderstood time and time again by the city engineer, I believe all the business owners present felt good about the idea of seeking solutions from a private firm. That meeting was on April 10th, and to my knowledge, no improvements, upgrades, or changes have been made either on First Avenue or to the downstream stormwater system in, intervening, in the intervening two plus months. Certainly not any change that has been communicated to us. What has happened since that meeting is another, another round of destructive flooding. Last week, on June 14th, heavy rain overloaded the drainage system on First Avenue once again and caused water to flood all three businesses on the south side of the street. <coughs> we will once again be filing an insurance claim with the city for damages. The firm the city initially intended to hire to study these problems supposedly declined to take on the project. After calling the mayor's office last week, I was told by Joey Motley that the city had recently engaged a firm to study the water issues on our block, and Mayor Fuller echoed that statement in an email the following day. This is the first that any, any of the relevant business owners had heard of this new firm, and thus far nobody has been able to tell us the name of this group, though it has been requested. And that's where we are now. We've been assured by Mayor Fuller that the city is working towards a solution, yet little information has been shared regarding plans or a timeline. We are concerned that city officials may be more likely to continue to pay insurance claims and clean up fees rather than commit to the financial undertaking necessary to resolve this issue. This would be incredibly short-sighted our three businesses have played a central role in the revitalization of this stretch of downtown Opelika. We've all invested tens of thousands of dollars in the measurable time and effort into building up our businesses here. Not in Auburn, not in Waverly, here. We've all made our own unique contributions to the idea and reputation of downtown Opelika as the community and the destination that the Chamber of Commerce, Opelika Main Street, and city officials would like to see it become. We've all managed to thrive in spite of the many challenges of these past few years, not the least of which has been this routine and entirely preventable flood. I believe we all want the same thing, to see the spaces on this newly revitalized block full and flourishing. The city of Opelika needs to find the will and resources to make this right and do so quickly, or it may, in the not so distant future, find itself with a few more empty storefronts on this fancy new block. Thank you. Others? Okay, thank you. We'll move on. <clears throat> A general business, Mr. Jones. Mr. President, first item under general business is a request for alcohol license from Flynn's Arcade LLC, doing business as Mr. Gaddy's Pizza. This is a restaurant, retail liquor, and retail beer on premise license. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? <coughs> second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Second item is a request for temporary street closures from Heritage House for an event on July 2nd, 2023. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Third item is a public hearing for a demolition at 509 First Avenue. This is a public hearing. I declare it open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Fourth item is a public hearing for a demolition at 315 South 4th Street. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, Come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. <coughs> Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Fifth item is a public hearing for a demolition at 2013 Waverly Parkway. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Sixth item is a public hearing for weed abatement assessment at 1733 First Avenue. I declare this public hearing open. 
Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. I have no one I declare public hearing closed. Seventh item is a public hearing for a weed abatement assessment at 206 Bird Avenue. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Eighth item is a public hearing for a weed abatement assessment at 615 Martin Luther King Boulevard. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Ninth item is a public hearing for a weed abatement assessment at 309 Spring Hill Avenue. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Tenth item is a public hearing for a weed abatement assessment at 510 Walker Street. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Eleventh and final item is a request for a downtown street closure from Red Clay Brewing for a bike night event on June 22nd, 2023. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have an uncall roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Bids, Ms. Finley. Council to approve a contract for, for ductile iron utility pole to be at opening date of June the 13th. The bid was mailed to 14 vendors. Two bids were received. Recommend the contract be awarded to McWayne Poles on the low bid meeting specification. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. We ask the council to approve a contract for vacuum excavation and utility daylight services. The bid opening date was June the 13th. The bid was mailed to 11 vendors. One bid was received. Recommend the contract be awarded to Smith Industrial Service on their sole bid meeting specifications. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have an uncall roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. We're asking the council to approve a contract for the construction of a multi-use trail along the banks of Pepperell Branch. The bid opening date was June the 13th. The bid was mailed to 12 vendors. One bid was received. Recommend the contract be awarded to Robinson Paving on their sole bid, meeting specifications in the amount of $711,242. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have an uncall roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Aja? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Family. And the group in the crowd. Uh, resolutions, Mr. Gunner? President Smith, the uh, first resolution approves travel expense reports submitted by President Smith, Joey Motley, City Administrator, and Mayor Fuller. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number two authorizes the Environmental Services Department to purchase two side loaders from Ingram Equipment Company at a total cost of $708,564.30. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have an uncall roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Aye. All voted aye. The third resolution approves change order number one uh, to the bid proposal between the City of Opelika and Harmon Engineering and Contracting Company 
for substation site work for Opelika Power Services. Uh, the amount of the change order is $12,000. It will increase the, con the contract amount to $109,575. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Uh, resolution number four approves a supplemental uh, services agreement with Motorola Solutions Incorporated for AES upgrades, uh, N70 series subscription, mock alert upgrade, and eventide logging recorder. Uh, the total uh, contract amount is one million two hundred fifteen thousand five hundred forty-seven dollars. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number five authorizes the demolition of the structure located at 509 First Avenue. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number six authorizes the demolition of the structure located at 315 South 4th Street. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Yes. Our, I know a lot about this particular building, and if I'm correct, our, the people that's in charge have changed hands, and have we had an opportunity to work with the new group? Jeff Koppelman. And, and we also extended the time. Yeah, but if I, if I can recall correctly, uh, the person that was in charge at that time uh, decided he was not going to be involved any longer. And I was just wondering, have we given the second group that's in charge an opportunity to do something with it? So you're saying they have agreed for the demolition? What we have done in the past, if we had one like this, we would uh, go ahead and address it and then give the mayor uh, a period of time of like six months to work with them. And then because we will already have passed it, then, you know, things would move on. Uh, and if we want to amend the resolution to in include that, we could certainly consider that. Well, would, would that be within my rights to ask maybe to table this until the mayor is here and he can assure that they will be give, given ample time, the second group that's in charge? Uh, Anybody can make a motion to table. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to table. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Smith. Uh, All voted out of table. Now we need to go back and do anything with the original motion to approve. No, no it no, it supersedes. it supersedes. It will supersede the main Mo motion. Yep. Okay. Resolution number seven uh, approves the demolition of the structure located at 2013 Waverly Parkway. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number eight approves a weed lien assessment 
in the amount of $191.70 against the property located at 1733 uh, Avenue C. Is there a motion for approval? Avenue C, Avenue A. I'm sorry? No, we're at 1733 First Avenue. First Avenue, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. So we'll, oh, oh, second, sorry. Do we have a motion second? Is there a discussion? <laughs> Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number nine approves a weed lien assessment in the amount of $240.50 against the property located at 206 Bird Avenue. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 10 approves a weed lien assessment in the amount of $139.42 against the property located at 615 Martin Luther King Boulevard. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 11 approves a weed lien assessment in the amount of $99.97 against the property located at 309 Spring Hill Avenue. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 12 approves a weed lien assessment in the amount of $89.17 against the property located at 510 Walker Street. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 13 approves a special appropriation in the amount of $1,500 to envision Opelika for Worthy Square. Uh, the amount of this, uh, again, the amount of this appropriation is $1,500, and the purpose of the appropriation is to provide uh, training to first responders, and the training will involve sex trafficking and outreach education. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having on call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Here, aye. All voted aye. Ordinances, Mr. Gunner? Uh, the first ordinance uh, is before the council for second reading. This is an ordinance to amend the zoning or ordinance uh, by rezoning a 14.86 acre tract of land from C2, which is a office retail district, to a planned unit development. Uh, the developer has requested that the council table this uh, agenda item. Uh, is there a motion to table? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Edge? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted out of table. Ordinance number two is also before the council for second reading. This is an ordinance amending section. 4-78 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Opelika relating to large animals running at large. Uh, the purpose of this ordinance is to update uh, this ordinance section to bring it into compliance with Act Number 2023-42 of the Alabama Legislature. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. The third ordinance is before the council for first reading. This is an ordinance that will repeal certain obsolete or outdated provisions of the city code. Ask for a member of the council to introduce this ordinance. Granted. Thank you. Uh, is there any other business come before the council this evening? The character trait of the month is cooperation, the actions of someone who is being helpful by doing what is wanted or asked for. 
Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Agent. So does this need a quorum or a majority? <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, yeah. Aye. Mr. Smith. I got nothing smart. Okay, to say. they all voted out of adjourn, guys. <laughs>